Hello everybody, back here for you again. So today I wanted to share with you guys the latest release from the Royal Mint's Queen's Beast series, which is the Black Bull of Clarence. It is a great new addition to what is a fantastic coin series, and one which continues to impress as new coins are released. So today I want to share with you guys what's the Black Bull, get it nice, close and personal to the camera, but also just share with you my thoughts and opinions on why I think this series has got a lot of potential. I think it's one to watch for the future. It really is fantastic to date and it's only going to improve in my opinion over time. Also, being a Ponderous Wednesday, I wanted to talk about an interesting topic which I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, which is what might happen to the series if the Queen was to pop her clogs before this series is over. What might happen to the coins which are already released and what might happen to those which haven't yet been released. Very, very interesting to have a good old think about. Now today we're going to be focusing on this Black Bull of Clarence in glorious quarter ounce gold bullion version. It's by far and away my favourite uh, of the whole range of different sizes and weights and metal types that are available. Uh, I haven't actually got the two ounce silver version in hand yet. That's coming as part of the huge, ridiculous, ginormous, add many, many more adjectives in here group order from Europe that I've arranged via the Silver Forum. Uh, we have got the biggest order to date guys and it is over 21,000 euros, a thousand plus ounces of silver, some platinum and also an ounce of gold in there as well. It is a pretty special, special order let me tell you and it's going to make for some epic unboxing videos. Now if you want to see those and you haven't subscribed to my channel already make sure you hit that subscribe button and if you do hit the alarm bell and you'll get notifications when those unboxing videos go live. Let me tell you Mrs Backyard Bullion Knight are waiting in eager anticipation to unbox a thousand ounces of silver. It's definitely not one to miss. Anyway, look, I digress. Let's get back to the subject at hand, which is the Bull of Clarence. So the coin we're gonna have a look at today is the quarter ounce gold bullion version. Now I have ordered the proof versions of these. They haven't arrived yet, uh, but when they do, I'll share those with you as well. But here we have it. And I have to say right off the bat, I do think Jodie Clark has done a really good job on this bull because let's face it a bull is not necessarily the most beautiful animal in the world certainly when you compare it with what we've had so far which is a lion a griffin a unicorn and a dragon uh, you know there's a lot that you can do with those types of uh, animals a bull not so much but Jodie Clark has done a great job at making this look in my opinion really really good it's very majestic looking it's very strong looking uh, you know you can see all the muscles rippling there on the coin and the light play that we see look at that very strong bull. Now I have to say though, the bull looks a little bit sad, it's got a frowny face on, uh, but I suppose it is probably just an angry bull. But generally, Jodie Clark, you've done a great job, I really do like the detail, I like the small little bits of details, of, like the hooves on the shield there and the uh, the tail swishing behind the shield and the bull itself and the detail on the end of the tail looks really good. Uh, on the other side we've got the, the same design that we've seen on the other coins, well I say same design, uh, you know, the lion and the griffin don't actually have this sort of swirly design, which is going to irk me when the series is done, that they're not all going to match. Uh, you know, that's something to have a think about, but, you know, that's life. Now, the bull, the bull of Clarence, is a very, very old uh, royal arms symbol, which is steeped in history all the way back to the War of the Roses in the 1400s. It was uh, traditionally the uh, the royal coat of arms for the Yorkshire kings back in those times. Uh, and very interestingly, on the shield there, you'll see that there's the three lions of England. So the kings of old, the kings of England had those uh, three lions of England. But also it's got the uh, three lilies of France on there, which is a little bit weird, you might think. Why has an old English royal uh, crest got some French uh, royal coat of arms on there? Well, that's because back in the 1400s, a lot of the English... Uh, royal family had very strong connections to France, to northern France, to Normandy, and also the French crown. And the addition of the uh, lilies of France on this crest was to try and strengthen the uh, the claim that the British, the the English kings had on the throne of France. So very interesting. Uh, you know, you learn something new every day, and I think that's fascinating stuff from this particular royal emblem. But we've uh, we've got you know this in its modern form now. This is the interpretation by uh, Jodie Clark looks really good and uh, you know I think what more can be said it's a fantastic coin really is and uh, and I think that's what makes this series really special in my opinion and that's why I think it's got a lot of room for growth as a collection in the future I mean just look at the way that all of these coins look out here together we've got such a an eclectic range of designs and obviously that's going to happen when you've got 10 different mythical majestic wondrous animals out there uh, but I really do think this looks fantastic as a set already just with five let alone the coins to come and we've got some really interesting releases yet to come and 
just run through them now. We've got the Falcon of the Plantagenets, which hopefully will look really good. I guess it's going to be, you know, similar in terms of the Griffin. It's a, it's a bird with some great details on the feathers and the, the wings are going to hopefully look pretty cool. We've also got another lion to come out, which is the White Lion of Mortimer. So it's going to be interesting to see how they do that with the two lions to see what the difference is going to be. We've also got something called the Yale of Beaufort, which is apparently a cross between an antelope and a goat, and a goat which could be interesting. So we'll see how that looks. We've got hopefully one is going to be my favourite and one which I hope they don't do something similar like the zombie dog we saw from the Roman, which is the white greyhound of Richmond. Big dog fan here from me and Mrs. Backyard Bully and especially from greyhounds. We've owned greyhounds before and we've owned uh, dogs like that and it would be really good to see that done well. And then the last one, which is the white horse of Hanover. So we've got some similar kind of themes coming out. Hopefully we'll see some really good fresh new designs with those coins. But I really do think that they've got so much potential. And as a coin collection, as a coin series, it's a really no-brainer in my mind to collect and invest in because, you know, you can pick these up for pretty good prices when they're released. Uh, you know, some of them have little higher premiums like the quarter ounce gold will have a slightly higher premium perhaps than the one ounce gold versions. Um, and you know the silver versions are dirt cheap uh, when they've come out, but we've seen great appreciation in their value. You know, for the quarter ounce gold, uh, even the sort of larger one ounce gold and everything, we've seen uh, huge kind of increases in premiums on those coins. The silver versions, especially, you know, the the uh, the lion and the griffin, which are the first two in silver, they have some pretty huge premiums when compared with the newest releases. So hopefully these are going to just improve over time, and we're going to see some uh, real growth in their coin in the coin values. Now, one thing that might well affect the coin values, and something I talked about at the start of the video, is what's going to happen if Queenie pops her clogs? Because let's face it, she's no spring chicken, she's in her 90s, uh, it is a very real possibility that she might well pass away before this series is released. Now that's partly why we're seeing two or three releases of these coins every year, so that we can run through this series, hopefully, without that happening. Uh, if that happens, if she doesn't pass away during the series, then this will probably be the largest last complete series of coins that's been released with the Queen's head on. You know, you can't see them starting another series of like 12 coins with uh, the Queen's relief on, uh, you know, when she's in her 90s. She's, it's just not likely that she'll live that long. It's possible, but it's not likely. Uh, but if she does pass away in the middle of the series, it's going to be very interesting to sort of have a think about what's going to happen now. You know, if she was to pass away today, uh, I'm sure that the Royal Mint will have a lot of other things on their mind as to what they're going to do with all of the general coins in circulation because, you know, you've got then the question of replacing or, you know, introducing new designs of all of the different, uh, you know, denominations of coins, not just in the UK, but all across the Commonwealth uh, that the Royal Mint produces with the Queen's head on. Uh, so it's going to be a pretty busy time for them. But when they do finally get around to thinking about what they're going to do about the Queen's Beast series, uh, you know, in my head, I think it would be absolutely awesome if she was to pass away, um, that they continue the series with her uh, relief on it. You know, I, I know that there's going to be issues around, you know, legalities of coins and things with a dead monarch on there rather than the live monarch. But uh, let's face it, you know, this, this Queen has been something of a you know, huge success in, in the world and she's the world's most recognised person and you know to, to honour her I think would be a really good thing for the Royal Mint to do and whether that's uh, their choice or the current as it would be Monarch's choice then, whether that's Prince Charles, whether he just skips and we go straight to Prince William, who knows. I would love to see that happen, I think that would then really make this series very special, it would be the last coins that are released with the Queen's head on. Um, but only time will tell, I have to say. Uh, the other option is if they change it and they put um, Prince Charles's head on, if he becomes king, uh, you know, what's going to happen to those? Are those going to be desirable? Are they not going to be desirable? Does that make the coins which are already out more desirable? I think there's uh, there's so many different things to think about with, with that situation. But of course, as I said earlier, it's probably not going to be the first forethought on uh, the Royal Mint's uh, agenda if the Queen was to die, because that's a whole another kettle of fish, which is actually a really interesting topic to think about, what the Royal Mint's going to have to go through when the Queen passes away and how much that's actually going to cost uh, the taxpayer and uh, you know it's very interesting to think about. Anyway, I digress again. The Queen's Beast series, what do you think? I think it's a real winner for the future. I think it's got so much potential. I really do like the new Black Bull of Clarence. I think it's a fantastic addition. Looks great. Well done Jodie Clark, I have to say, because as I said earlier, a bull is not an easy thing to make look majestic and I do think this looks really good. Which is your favourite? I am very, very torn Actually, at the moment, I haven't got a, a single favourite, I have to say. They're all special in different ways for me. 
which makes it really difficult to choose an outright favourite, but I don't know, maybe I'm leaning towards the Griffin. I just think it looks really good. But anyway, let me know which you think is the best of these five particular designs that's out there. Uh, comment in this video. As I said earlier, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button because let me tell you, this giant 1000 ounce unboxing video is not one to be missed. It is going to be pretty epic. I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to do it, by the way. It's going to be uh, so big, so big to do. Could be in numerous parts, who knows. Anyway, I digress once again. If you like this video, put a thumbs up on it, share it around. Do comment down below what you think about the Black Bull of Clarence. Comment what you think about the Queen's Beast, Queen's Beast series. And also comment what you think is going to happen if Queenie was to pop her clogs. Otherwise, have a fantastic week, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.